Hello, this is Joel Blackford with Beth Hesed Sabbath Fellowship. We're not meeting until the government allows us to meet again, but we're still talking about the philosophy of the end times. That's what I do. I don't do the standard news routine where I jump on the internet every 15 minutes and tell you blah, 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 blah. What I try to do is give you some knowledge about how to survive the end times, the philosophy of why you were born for such a time as this, and what's going to be your reality coming forward. This one's going to be one of those philosophical type of a, a, a session. Um, we're going to talk about the Antichrist, but we're going to not call him a narcissist, which would be really typical And what I did the last time I recorded a video like this about six, seven months ago. No, he's more like a covert narcissist, and we're going to try to figure out the subtle differences between the two and discuss this together. Now, as in all cases, I'm hoping that the Antichrist will be outed at some point in time, but you're not going to notice it. You're going to notice the times setting up for him and dividing the state of Israel um, is one of those signs. And every time we know that we're not supposed to do that, some politician gets it in his mind that he can divide it and make it work. And Trump forced Netanyahu to sign this agreement back on 12-6 of 2019. That didn't set off the end times, as some people are saying, um, but it's one more sign of it. It's just one more sign in our philosophy of the end times. So we're going to be talking about overt versus covert and all the narcissistic tendencies. We're preparing for what I believe is a covert narcissist. And so he's not going to be out in the forefront. He's going to be behind the scenes in, in certain cases. And I'm showing uh, Dr. Les Carter off on the right hand side. He's one of my uh, sources that I like. Um, there's a public self, there's a private self, there's the secret self. And I think you're going to see that as we move along. This will be interesting, I hope, for you. Uh, that secret covert narcissist. Once again, as always, I try not to twist the Bible. I try to give you the verses that apply. I try to give you real prophecies that match. Uh, I try to give you the news as much as possible. And this isn't as newsworthy. This is not timely. I just have been putting this video up for about six months as I started to study more about covert narcissism and understand the technicalities of it. As I go through the philosophy of the end of days. So, he will be beautiful and manipulative. That could be a covert or an overt narcissist. He won't be ugly. There's no doubt about it. And he will be able to tempt and tease and things like that. But that could work for overt and covert narcissists. I believe he will be more like Alexander the Great. He'll be a handsome young man. He will be very quick, like a leopard, because he is compared to a leopard. Um, and I saw the beast come up out of the sea with ten horns and seven heads, and on the horns were ten crowns, and on its heads blasphemous names of the beast, which I saw was like a leopard. Okay, so that's a little bit like Alexander the Great in Greece, and a little bit like Germany. And uh, one person that you may or may not trust is Sadhu Sundar Savage, and he says that the, that the Antichrist will have many locations of power, but one of which, the foremost, will be Germany, Berlin to be specific. So we'll see. Um, it does work biblically, though. It does. Demons wear masks. So I was sitting in a rabbinic class about two years ago, and I was looking at the Midrash, and the Midrash, the first comment was, Shadim wear masks. And I thought, no way that rabbis talk about this. No way, no way, no way. They barely even talk about Satan, but they actually do. They just don't talk about it with Christians. Keep that in mind. They have certain private conversations that are not open to Christians and Christian theology because they're compared to the Satan because they don't believe in Yeshua. Well, they can't see Yeshua. So if God put the blinders over their eyes, that's something that God did, and he gets to remove the blinders when it's his time. Um, in the meantime, demons wear masks. Now, you probably don't care about this, but during the time that I was going through my divorce and my former wife was having an affair, I saw something that looked like this demon um, making love to me in my bedroom uh, while I was awake. And it held me down. Uh, it's called sleep paralysis for, uh, I don't know, probably 15 minutes. And so this happens to be a character from Space Ghost. But demons wear masks. The rabbis know it. It's, it's in... It's, it's in the Bible. It's just you have to look deeply to figure it out. But, but they're not going to show you their true nature. They just won't. So coverts hide their shame. So keep that in mind, this, this shame-based thing. The demons were above us, and now oh, they're going to be destroyed in the end. And so there's a shame-based culture going on with demons 
and with covert narcissists. So we'll see that. And then all the worlds their stage. Well, the demons work like actors, and so do the covert narcissists. Now, the overt narcissists, you can tell that the world's their stage because they're on the stage. The covert ones, they're working behind the scenes. They're actors too. So keep in mind, they wear masks, and they're actors, and they're not really, <laughs> it's all about them, no doubt about it. And, and so they are charming, um, but the most vicious ones are not the overt narcissists. Those guys give you jobs. It's the covert narcissists that destroy you. And we'll go through that. So once again, these are the overt narcissists. We know they are. We know Bill Clinton's an overt narcissist. We know Barack Obama is an overt narcissist. Donald Trump, absolutely. I'll give you that. But so was Mr. Kennedy, President Kennedy, and his women there. So we, we know that. We, we know about narcissism. We don't need Dr. Grand to tell us about that. We, we know these guys are. But they also are the people that are willing to take the horrible job of being president or whatever else. So we know about the overt narcissist cult leaders and, and how bad they can be. But it's in some cases our own fault because we can see the narcissism at work. They're grandiose. Their ideas are grandiose. They're preoccupied with fantasies, unlimited success, power, whatever else. Demands blind, unquestioned obedience. Requires excessive admiration, sense of entitlement, uh, exploitive of others. Um, are arrogant, haughty, and you can see it. They're they're overt, exaggerated sense of power, sexual advantage. Oh yeah, and Joe Biden is one of these guys. He's an overt narcissist. There's nothing covert about him. Okay, sex is a requirement, but so are all of these politicians. You vote for them, people. Okay, I think we all can say that we voted for overt narcissists. We know that we choose the lesser of the two overt narcissists. Okay, now these are the different types of narcissists. Cerebral, they're, they're thinking about it. They think they're smarter than everybody else. I work in IT. I see this all the time. I'm fortunate that I work for a company where we have brilliant people, and they're, very, and they're they are brilliant, but they're very nice and sweet about it. Okay, and there are some like that. It's it's kind of rare, and I'm very blessed to be working where I am. Um, the main thing is uh, somatic would be physical beauty. So the people that are taking pictures um, and putting it on Instagram all day, every day, that's somatic narcissism. Okay. The overt we've discussed, okay, and, and Donald Trump is. Who cares? You knew it before you ever voted for him or voted against him. And guess what? <laughs> Hillary Clinton's <laughs> a covert narcissist, okay? Um, that's a narcissist who, on the outside world, appears to be kind, altruistic, and full of integrity, but they save their rage, and Hillary has the rage, extreme selfishness and cruelty for their nearest and dearest. She used to whack the blazes out of Bill and other people, too. I mean, she's a vicious person. The Secret Service says that you, there's this public persona and then there's the nasty thing. When the door is closed and she has the chance to strike, she will strike. That's the covert narcissist. And they're even more dangerous. So you chose the overt narcissist because every move that he makes is right in your face. And you didn't cho choose the covert. You chose wisely, people. Okay? Parasitic. Oh, they just want to suck it out of you, okay? And then the boomerang. That's your own fault, okay? If you take them back again, you're codependent and you know it. So they want to leave you as a mess, a confused mess, in self-doubt, very anxious, very depressed, feeling stupid. It's a shame-based abuse. They want you to feel stupid and shame-based and stay in that lethargic state. They want you to be helpless, traumatized, questioning your reality. That's what they're looking for. And they filter through things and they figure you out very, very quickly. These covert people, not so much the overts. The overts don't care. They only care about themselves. It's the coverts that are dangerous because they embody some of these other things where they're parasitic and they may be somatic or cerebral. Okay. Oh, goodness. I worked for this guy. Okay. So this is Daniel Day-Lewis and there will be blood. <laughs> Every morning I'd get to work and my former boss, this is a bunch of years ago, would, would pop up on the phone tree and I'd see this. This is how he wanted to interact with me. He was horrible. He was a horrible covert narcissist. He was a psychological cancer screaming basically he never screamed it at me but he, he, he behaved like this i drink your milkshake i have a straw it reaches across the room i have a milkshake you have a milkshake 
I drink your milkshake. And he's a covert narcissist. And, and he uses projection and, and deflecting weaknesses onto his prey. This is what we're dealing with with these people. And this is where I'm going with the Antichrist. So stick with me, okay? They're bloodsuckers. They, they're leeches. They're lunatics, too. They are stealing from healthy people. And they, they only can take, they can't give, they can't give you anything positive, they can't do anything, uh, they, they use this, they are part of a shame-based culture, and they want to bring that forward onto other people. They're always looking for someone because they're parasitic in most cases. So let's discuss covert narcissism a little bit more, okay? Closet narcissist, introverted narcissist, the person who displays the more discreet form of narcissism. They may appear to be shy, humble, anxious, but underneath they're, they're vulnerable persona is someone who is selfish, manipulative, and has a grandiose sense of self, but they never accomplish anything, okay? So when you really look at Trump, he's overt, I'll give you that, but he accomplishes. Hillary is covert. She really hasn't accomplished anything in her life other than, you know, Bill did it all, and Bill's an overt narcissist. So once again, they have the fragile identity and then poor self-esteem, and that builds this this horrible complex within them. Okay, so normally you and I are healthy internal processing people. You know, we're sane. We process internally. We process the stimuli, and we we try to handle it in a normal, healthy way. And we want to heal. <laughs> Covert narcissists don't. Okay, they want to make you look insane. I know you are, but what are you, you know? And so they can't look at themselves. They can't internally process anything at all. Whatever happened to them, shame-based, whatever it was when they were kids, and the Antichrist is part of this, keep that in mind. There is that old-fashioned Satan fell from being literally in the face of God the Father. And he fell. And so he had this exalted position. He was beautiful. And so there's that shame-based situation going on there where he wants to, in, say, Isaiah 14 or in Ezekiel 28, he would like to be able to dominate and be the leader. But he's not a leader. God is our leader. And Yeshua is his son. And so, and it co, I mean, they're one. So it's the same difference. So there's the blaming and the shaming and the baiting and the devaluing and the gaslighting. We'll discuss that. Trauma bonding. Oh, they love that. And pain inflictors. There's contempt and the cycle of abuse. They know how it was used on them and they do it to other people. And they just go through the cycle, 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 cycle. Okay. Covert narcissists are like addicts. They crave power, control, entitled treatment, but they've never earned it like an overt narcissist would. Okay, an overt narcissist would go get the loan from the bank and work really, really hard. And yeah, they would be saying, look at me, I accomplished everything. But the covert narcissist won't do any of those things. They won't work hard. They want to just have it given to them because they're a narcissist and they're addicted to their narcissism. So they use gaslighting. So let's go through that. That's from the 1940s. It's a movie. Basically, the husband said, hey, honey, the, uh, the lights are being dimmed. And, and no, it was the other way around. It was the wife. It doesn't matter. The spouse would say, honey, the lights are dimmed. And the spouse would say, no, you, you must not be interpreting. You must be losing your eyesight or your mind or something like that. And so what you see is not what's occurring or mm, because they're gaslighting you. They're tricking you and tricking your mind. OK, so um, it's an addiction. Uh, love bombing is part of it. Uh, um, trauma bonding. So trauma bonding. I used to work with a guy. <laughs> I hope he doesn't watch my videos. And so he would like to go out after we do work all day long and, and get into trouble. Um, because that was trauma bonding. He loved that, you know, and he would like to do the riskiest possible behavior. And I got fired once for that, you know, um, <laughs> I didn't care. I mean, the place was a nightmare anyway, because the boss was a manic depressive guy, once again in tech. Um, and, and so bottom line is, you know, I finally, I, I, I hate to admit it, I went back there, I went through the cycle, and went through this guy again, and I finally quit the second time around. Just It was, it was nutballish, okay? Even though I was very, very good at what I did there, it wasn't worth the hell. 
So, covert narcissism. We've talked about it. So, they're masters of disguise. Remember the mask concept. And the Antichrist will wear that mask until he finally takes off the mask. They're successful actors. They're humanitarians, politicians, clergy members. They can be psychotherapists. They're beloved. They are. They're appreciated. They're selfish, very secretly selfish. They're calculating, controlling, angry, vindictive. They will take that bat out and beat you senseless when the door closes and it gets quiet. They stay in the closet until it's time to come out. Uh, they're very sensitive. They're hypersensitive. They're vulnerable. They're shy. Uh, they're constrained. I hope this dog will be quiet. I you know, that's just what happens when the dogs go out late at night. So anyway, they're shy, constrained. Uh, they use external sources to regulate their self-esteem. Um, interpersonal conflict regarding <laughs> anger, hostility. They, they, they don't process properly, okay? So the Antichrist isn't going to process things the right way. He just isn't. Um, they get depressed very easily. Uh, um, there's going to be anxiety, anxiety working with them all the time. They have these grandiose expect, expectations. The Antichrist really thinks that we're going to turn around and worship him, okay? And it ain't going to happen. We'll worship Yeshua, but not him. So anyway, moving on. Um, these are the wolves in sheep's clothing. And they make, so keep this in mind, there are a ton of pastors that are covert narcissists, tons of them. And usually it comes out eventually. And one, no, I, I don't know that. And I don't want to make the comment on this, but there was a pastor that killed himself recently. And he was in affairs and some other things like that. And so in some cases, they're covert narcissists. I don't know. I, I can't diagnose a person that I have never met. But there, there are many, many, many pastors that are covert narcissists. Just get used to it. Now, the overt ones, who cares? You know, you can smell that a mile away. It's the covert ones that are just so dangerous and they really are so destructive, okay? And so it's the person that, that makes the snide remarks during the message. It's the person, you know, so the message is great, but they're going to come up and complain afterwards, but, but subtly, okay? They're really, really subtle. They're wolves in sheep clothing, and they will drive people out of the church, too. They're very good. And we'll go through flying monkeys eventually here. But anyway, the point is that they don't work alone. A good covert narcissist has flying monkeys. Okay. Coverts are marked by failed ambition. No doubt about it. Okay. Um, there's the emptiness, the fra fragility, low functioning. Uh, they're sometimes lazy too. That's one other weird thing about it. The covert narcissists are more lazy or they'll work, but you know, it takes more effort to get them moving because they know they're going to fail because they're lazy, okay? Um, they they will brag about themselves, but th there's not much to brag about. Um, and they are very vulnerable. And, and, and then they bait you and hook you by using that uh, vulnerability, okay? So what's the abuse? It's... It's that they get you to buy into the fact that they could be successful if you just help them. If you would become their uh, supply, so to speak, they'll be very, very successful. Okay, now we're moving on to vital mind psychology, and this is a, a doctor, and we're going to go through one aspect of, of them, of, of covert narcissists, and that's show defraud. OK, and and it's like Hitler's contempt. It's a lot of contempt. OK, so the process is that covert narcissism leads to upward social comparisons to envy to schadenfreude, which is satisfaction or pleasure felt at someone else's misfortune. They actually get happy as a result of you failing and they destroy you. But they only do so. They only destroy you when they're ready to move on to the next supply. So they position it perfectly. The new supply is ready and has taken the bait. And now the Schodenfraud kicks in, which is where they can destroy you. And I don't know what's wrong with the covert narcissist, but that's where they get their pleasure when they take you out. OK, so um, a relief, envy, downward social comparison. You know, this this is what they go through. This is just one aspect of it. But Schadenfreude is kind of like Hitler. It's it's contempt, and that's why he was so easily able to kill Jews. He viewed them contemptuously. Okay, 
So um, this is from Daniel Fox, Dr. Daniel Fox. And so we, we want to ID and manage these covert narcissists. They're, they feel inferior, self-doubt, feeling ashamed, fragility, sensitive to setbacks and criticism, nags continuously, little vocal commitment, vocational. <laughs> a lot of vocal. Um, they're always working it. They're always setting up flying monkeys. And I'll discuss that later on. Don't worry. But no vocational commitment, really. I mean, they're lazy. You'll see it. Multiple superficial interests. Oh, yeah, they're very superficial. You know, they're, they're just bored with things. I'm bored with this because I don't feel like working because I'm just smarter than everybody else. Chronic boredom. There you go. Okay, uh, more from Daniel Fox. Unable to depend or trust others, envy of others' talents, possessions, a lot of envy. Capacity for deep relations, impossible. They can't, they, they envy others' deep relations. Lack of regard for boundaries, oh yeah, they push right through the boundaries. <laughs> and you then are responsible to set up your own boundaries because they're going to push through. And if you don't set them up, it's the end. They're just going to push right on through because they're covert narcissists. Disregard of others' time and boundaries, of course. Shifts values to gain favor. Pathological lying. Oh, yeah. Covert narcissists are the best at that. They're incredibly talented liars. Delinquent tendencies. Disrespect for authority. There is the dark triad that's been around for a long period of time, which is narcissism, psychopath, psychopathy, um, Machiavellianism. Um, these fragile egos, egos just, they, they create this dark triad especially in many people. But then there's also the dark tetrad, which is the psychopathy, the sociopath nature, the narcissist behavior, the Machiavellian. It's, it's all of it into one horrible thing. And the Antichrist will be a sociopath. And so a sociopath, you, you really can't fix a Ted Bundy. He's going to kill. He's going to, okay? Uh, you can put them in prison. If you believe in capital punishment, you can give them capital punishment. It's not going to, you can even threaten him with that. Uh, he was almost tempting people to catch him and put him away and, and, and give him capital punishment. I think that's why he moved to Florida because he knew that's what would happen down there. Okay, so covert narcissist traits. This is from Dad Surviving Divorce. Outstanding listeners and observers. Oh, they're watching everything that you do. Oh, they're watching you. Uh, demons and the Antichrist are watching you closely. Satan watches you. You disclose, they don't disclose. That's what watchers do. The AC and the demons guard who they are, hiding behind masks. Now, of course, I'm adding the Antichrist and the demons part, okay? There's no way <laughs> dad surviving divorce talks about that. But here's the mask concept again, okay? They guard. They guard it very carefully. They don't want you to know, and, and whatever it takes to lie about it, they don't want you to know that they're covert narcissists and that they're, they have some kind of an internal pain. Uh, they mirror you incredibly well. They project back on you, onto you. You are falling in love with yourself, with a covert narcissist. They push the soulmates really fast. They go to bed with you very quick. They set the hooks fast. You're in a whirlwind romance right away. Uh, it's fast. They trauma bond you, whatever they can do to get you to bond with them. And then they can suck the life right out of you. Um, they start pushing their boundaries because they don't know where boundaries stop, okay? Because trauma bonding <laughs> works better when you push the boundaries and you aren't allowed any boundaries. They will bait you and poke you to fight. Oh, they love the public fights because that makes you look bad and it makes them look good because they blame it on you. You catch them lying, but they deflect it right back on you. No, I didn't lie. You lied. And it's like, who's crazy here? And they want you to, they love crazy making. They want you to appear to be crazy in the sight of all your friends and family. They love the state of chaos. They love trauma bonding. And there are verses that work and, and show this. So we'll, we'll start checking out the verses now. Here's an, a simple one from John 10. The thief comes only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. destroy. So let's push it this way and say the covert narcissist comes only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. They want to suck the life out of you and then move on to another supply. I, Yeshua, have come that they may have life and life in its fullest measure. I am the good shepherd. <laughs> the covert narcissist is the bad shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. The hired hand, since he isn't a shepherd and sees the sheep aren't his own, sees the wolf coming, abandons, and the sheep runs away because he's a covert narcissist. And, and yeah, the wolf drags them away, which could be the covert narcissist there too. So the congregational leader could be a covert narcissist. And that happens all the time. 
all the time. So, I mean, it's <laughs> good guys wear black, okay? They know that pastoral leaders can tend to be covert narcissists. It's just, and there are many other people within churches that are just looking for victims. Sometimes they come in selling investment ideas and insurance and other things like that. And they're just using the congregation to make some money and then move on to another congregation. So trauma bonding occurs due to the cyclical nature of abuse. And, the, you know, it's this roller coaster. And so they want you on that roller coaster and thinking that you're crazy and they can be the only person that can solve that. So the abuser is telling you that you haven't been abused. Okay, so now we're moving on to Daniel 7. And so this is what he said. The fourth animal will be a fourth kingdom on earth. It will be different from all the other kingdoms. It will devour the whole earth, trample it down and crush it. As for the ten horns, out of this kingdom, ten kings will arise, and yet another will arise after them. Now, he will be different from all the earlier ones, and he will put down three kings. He will speak words against the Most High and try to exhaust, that's trauma bonding, the Holy Ones of the Most High. He will attempt to alter the seasons and the law, and the Holy Ones will be handed over to him for time, times, and half a time, three and a half years. So he's going to try to suck the life out of the Holy Ones. That's us, the Holy Ones of the Most High, the believers. That's what he's going to try to do. So that's a covert activity. As for the horn that broke the fourth, which rose up in its place, the four kingdoms will arise out of this nation, but not with the power the first king had. But in the latter part, that's the Akarith of their reign. That's like seeing the end times. When the evildoers have become as evil as possible, there will arise an arrogant king, skilled in intrigue, that's like saying covert narcissism, because you're not quite sure, is this guy a bad guy or a good guy? You know, he's, he's going to be arrogant. His power will be great, but not with the power the first king had. He will be amazingly destructive. He will succeed in everything, whatever he does, and he will destroy the mighty and the holy ones. Oh, yeah, he, once again, a covert narcissist goes after the holy ones. Why not? Hey, they're supply. You know, and there's and the problem is Christians are so loving and forgiving that we're easy marks. He will succeed through craftiness and deceit, become swelled with pride. So that's where he becomes more of an overt narcissist, but he starts out covert and destroy many people just when they feel the most secure. He will even challenge the prince of princes, Yeshua. But without human intervention, he will be broken. The vision of the evenings and the mornings, which has been told, is true. But you are to keep the vision secret because it is about the days in the distant. The, so this is the Acharith HaYomim, the days way out where we are right now. That's Daniel 8. Okay, And that's dealing with Greece and Persia. But you can see that because of the words in there saying about the days in the distant future and other things like that, Acharith is in there three times. It's like saying, mm, I'm comparing what you're seeing with Greek and Persia to the end of days. Keep that in mind. And so Greece with the one horn would be the Antichrist coming against, I believe, the Pope and that false harlot system. So the beast system will win out in the end. That's covert at first. Okay, so overt or covert here. This is Daniel 11. Those who act wickedly against the covenant, he will corrupt with his blandishments. But the people who know their God will stand firm and prevail. So we're the godly ones, we're the Kedoshim, uh, the Hagios. Those among the people who have discernment will cause the rest of the people to understand what has happened. So we're going to figure it out. A video like this that tells you, hey, He's a covert narcissist. Start watching for those signs. We're going to go through more signs. Don't worry. There's a lot more to go. Sorry, this is going to be a really long video. We're at 27 minutes and I barely got started. Nevertheless, for a while, they will fall victim to sword, fire, exile, pillage. Uh, when they stumble, they will receive a little help, although many who join them will be insincere. Even some of those with discernment will stumble. stumble. That's covert. Okay, So that some of them will be refined, purified, and cleansed for an end. That's uh, that's the Kates yet to come at the designated time. That's where we're getting close right now. This is continuing on with Daniel 11, which talks about the Antichrist again. The king, the Antichrist, will do as he pleases. He will exalt himself and consider himself greater than any god. That's overt. And he will utter monstrous blasphemies against the god of gods. He will prosper only until the period of wrath is over, for what has been determined must take place. He will show no respect for the gods of his ancestors, uh, what they worship, and for the god women worship. He won't show respect for any god because he will consider himself greater than all of them. 
But instead, he will honor the God of, I'm going to put the word in, it's ma'uzim in the Hebrew, and that's male shaggy goats. You think it's fortresses. I think there's a shaggy goat perspective, and I just wanted to clear that up with you, that it could be interpreted both ways, and it makes more sense that he's aligned with something called Azazel. We'll discuss it later. With gold, silver, precious stones, and other costly things. So this is later on in Daniel 11. Okay? And then we're going to finish now out Daniel 11 and see it one more time. And with the people of the strange God that he shall know, he shall make strong male shaggy goats. Okay? Make a strong uh, agreement with the male shaggy goats, this Azazel figure. Uh, just think Yom, Yom Kippur until we get to the exact discussion of it. Increase their glory and cause them to rule over many and shall divide the land for gain, for gain uh, make strong from the male shaggy goats. Increase their glory, cause them to rule over many and shall divide the land for gain. But at the time of the, the end, the king of the south shall lock horns with him. The king of the north shall raise up a storm against him with chariots and with horsemen and with many ships. And he shall enter into the lands and overflow and pass over. He shall come to the glorious land and many prophets shall fall, but these shall escape out of his hand, even Edom and Moab, and the first of the sons of Ammon. That, oh, a little bit more from Daniel 11. He will reach out his hand to seize other countries too. The land of Egypt will not escape. He will control the treasuries of gold and silver, as well as everything else in the Egypt of value. Put and Ethiopia will be subject to him. However, news from the east and north will frighten him. Uh, so that he moves out in great fury to ruin and completely do away with many. Finally, when he pitches the tents of his palace between the seas and the mountain of the holy glory, that's Jerusalem, he will come to his end and no one will help him. That's the end of Daniel 11, 42 through 45. So let's give you a few more verses just to give you an idea. And these are more about Satan, but it doesn't matter because the concept should work. This is from Revelation 11. When they finish their witnessing, the beast... Uh, so that's the, the witnesses. I put it in blue so you could kind of see. They're the good guys, okay? The beast, the Antichrist, coming up. Out of, and it's a therion in the Greek. Um, he'll pop up from the abyss, so way down deep underneath. So in some ways, he's not even human. Um, his spirit isn't. Uh, and, and so the, the beast coming up will fight against the two witnesses, overcome them, and kill. That's narcissistic rage, okay? Because he's not going to put up with two guys witnessing and telling the truth about him. So the narc rage occurs, okay? That's Re Revelation 11, Revelation 12. The great dragon was thrown out. That's narcissistic injury. And that ancient serpent, known as the devil and Satan, the adversary, the devil of the whole world, he was hurled down to the earth and his angels were hurled down with him. And the dragon, at this point in time, this is more of Revelation 12, the dragon was infuriated. That's narcissistic rage again over the woman and went off to fight the rest of her children those who obey God's commands and bear witness to Yeshua. So this is narcissistic, but we're not sure who this guy is. I mean, right now, uh, we don't know who the Antichrist is. If, if he's on the planet today, I'm, I'm sure he is, but who is he? Well, he's covert. Now, Revelation 13. So who is like the covert narc? Just think about it. And I saw the beast, the Therion, come up out of the sea with 10 horns and seven heads. You've seen that from Daniel. And the horns were ten royal crowns, and on the heads blasphemous names. And the beast, which I saw, was like a leopard, that's like Germany, but with the feet like those of a bear, that's kind of like Russia, and a mouth like that of a lion, Great Britain, and to it the dragon, that's like China, gave its power, its throne, and great authority. Now, you're saying, no, that should be uh, the, the leopard, that should be uh, um, <laughs> Greece. Well, Greece is not a factor in the end times, okay? Uh, the lion, that should be uh, Babylon. Babylon's really not a factor, other than maybe mystery Babylon. Um, and, the, and Russia is more of a factor than Medo-Persia right now, although Medo-Persia is interesting. Uh, and some of the ancients work, but this is about the end times, guys, so just deal with it. We'll, we'll go with the modern applications. Gave its power, throne, and great authority. One of the heads, plural, of the beast appeared to have received a fatal wound, only one, but its fatal wound was healed, and the whole earth followed after the beast in amazement. They worshipped the dragon because he had given authority to the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast, and who can fight against it? You're not sure exactly who this person is at this point in time. It's still covert. It still is. Until the authority is delegated, you don't see that this is a, 
a covert narcissist becoming an overt one. I was given a mouth speaking arrogant blasphemies, and it was given, it was given, not me, it, I, it was given a mouth speaking arrogant blasphemies, and was given authority to act for 42 months. So it opened its mouth in blasphemies against God to insult his name, and the Shekinah, that's feminine, keep that in mind, that's a feminine aspect of God, the Shekinah, and those living in heaven, and was allowed to make war on God's holy people, the Hagios again, uh, the, uh, the uh, Kedoshim, uh, from the Hebrew and the Greek, and to defeat them, and was given authority over every tribe, people, language, and nation. Everyone living on the earth will worship us, except those whose names are written in the book of life, belonging to the Lamb, slaughtered before the world was founded. That's Revelation 13, 5 through 8. And so, continuing on in Revelation 13, and it forces, this is baiting, everyone, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on his right hand and on his forehead, preventing, that's baiting, that's narcissist baiting, anyone from buying or selling. I mean, it forces you into this confrontation with this covert narcissist. You're going to have to sit there and either starve or beg and, and take that mark. So anyway, from buying or selling, unless he has the mark, that is the name of the beast or the number of his name. This is where wisdom is needed. That's no contact. And with covert narcissists, you want no contact. Wisdom is don't take the mark. Don't beg the Antichrist. Don't interact with the Antichrist. They're covert narcissists. They're baiting you to take the mark of the beast. Those who understand should count the number of the beast, for it is the number of the person, and its number is 666. It could be 616, too. It depends. Um, uh, it, it's, it, it's a stigma, not a sigma in the Greek. So, um, deceived, revealed, is it overt or covert? This is from 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 through 5. Don't let anyone deceive you. That's covert in any way. For the day will not come until after the apostasy has come, and the man who separates himself from the Torah has been revealed. That means he was covert <laughs> as a narcissist. And the one destined for doom, he will oppose himself to everything the people call a god or make an object to worship. He will put himself above them all so that he will sit in the temple. That's not us. That's the Holy of Holies. That's not a building, people, per se. Um, it's, it's a part of the building. It, the, the heron in the Greek would be the building or the buildings. The, the naos would just be the Holy of Holies of God and proclaim that he himself is God. Uh, he's no longer covert. Okay, but he was deceptive for a while there. Don't you remember that I was still with you? I used to tell you these things. That's Paul speaking. And then continuing on in Second Thessalonians with Paul. And now you know what is restraining, so that he may be revealed in his own time. For already this separating from Torah is already worked secretly, but it will be secretly, covert times two, until he who is restraining is out of the way. Then the one who embodies separation from the Torah will be revealed. That's covert. The one whom the Lord Yeshua will slay with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the glory of his coming. When this man who avoids Torah comes, the adversary will give him the power to work all kinds of false miracles, signs, and wonders. It becomes more overt when you see those overt things. Okay, But in the meantime, there's going to be a lot of secret things. That's covert narcissism. He will enable, and this is ended out, I think, second Thessalonians. We're getting close to the end of it. Um, he will enable himself to deceive, that's covert, in all kinds of wicked ways, those who are headed for destruction because they would not receive the love of truth that they could that could have saved them. This is why God is causing them to go astray, sending them strong delusion so that they believe a lie. That's covert. The result will be that all who have not believed the truth but have taken the pleasure in wickedness will be condemned and taken the mark. So let's move on and do a little Peter here, and we're getting close to the end. So they stalk the prey. <laughs> this is a, an important verse to me. This is my life verse over the years, First Peter 5, 7. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. And I went KJV because that's how I memorized it. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. That's covert. That's 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 the covert narcissist. Seeking who he may devour. Seeking supply all day long. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. So we're all dealing with this covert narcissist that is seeking supply. 
We're back to some of my sources. Les Carter, as I mentioned earlier on, is one of these guys. So what should you do with this covert narcissist? Set healthy boundaries. Stand for decency. Use delicate detachment. Be consistent. You know, um, love, goodness, things like that that are more important than hatred and bitterness and things like that. So use what Les is talking about. And if you need to hear more from Les, he's a wonderful guy. I believe he's a Christian. He, he, sometimes I'll mention that that sounds like the Antichrist. And he doesn't respond, but others do. And so he's got Christians listening to him. So they're very be very aware of the Antichrist's woundedness, his anger, and the cancer inside him. The, the Antichrist pessimism can take over inner energy. They can't trust. Uh, they're on a the supply. They're prowling. I mean, they're, they're on a prowling for supply always. Okay? Learn to see yourself as a separate person from the Antichrist. My mind belongs to me. These are quotes from Les. Don't change the AC. Find your steadiness. Don't, don't, don't try to change a covert narcissist. So if you're dealing with somebody like this in your own life right now, don't think you can change them. Okay, God changes, you don't change. Get out, get away, and find your sanity again. And then commit to calm firmness. Don't match an antichrist tone. Don't let them bait you, walk away. Thank you, Les. These are other people that I cite, so there's Les on the right-hand side. Um, that's uh, Dr. Rami. Um, she is from India. Um, I don't know her politics or religion or anything like that, but I like the fact that she has lots of tips on narcissism and covert narcissism. Abdul Saad, he might be a Muslim. I don't care. Guy's brilliant. And so I cite him frequently. And then Dr. Fox down there on the lower right. We're dealing with narcissists right now. Okay. As I mentioned, the pastors are wolves in some cases, not all pastors. Obviously there's probably, you know, 80% good pastors out there, but the 20% pollute the rest of them. And there are some pictures there, you know, the Joker face and everything like that. He's an abuser. He's a covert narcissist. He would never come out and say, I just want your money. I just want all of your money. Just give me all of your money. Okay. And then the guy in the middle there with the tattoos, um, and, and the guy below him. I mean, when your pastor spends more time pumping iron than preaching, than practicing for his sermons and researching his sermons, you're in big trouble. And when, you're, when your pastor looks like Sideshow Bob and talks about the fact that, that he can sovereignly and irresistibly elect people to salvation, he doesn't need any Yeshua stuff, okay? Or if, you're, if your pastor spends more time on, on getting tattoos done than on studying the word, you're in big trouble. Or if your pastor, I don't know, if they're just egotistical. So just deal with the fact that there are narcissists, covert narcissists in the pulpit. Just deal with it. Okay. So I want to compare this real quick. I'm sorry. I'm going really long on this one and I didn't plan to go this long. The cuckoo bird is the type of bird that is a parasite, just like the covert narcissist. They don't come in and lay eggs that look different. They look just like the bird's eggs. And so their bird pops out first. It eats the other eggs. It pushes the other eggs out of the nest. Um, it demands all the food. It's an obnoxious, life-sucking brood parasite. Okay, and that's what covert narcissists do. They they lay an egg in your household. And then they demand that you take care of them. Yeah, I work so hard. No, you sit on the couch and you wait for me to serve you, you know. Um, and they push people out of the church. And so uh, it takes 10 seconds for a cuckoo bird to push the eggs out, uh, the one egg out, and then get all the benefits from it. So don't let the cuckoo birds make you cuckoo. You're sane, okay? So here's some terms from Dr. Romney. Narc supply, flirting, they love to flirt, and they're always looking for supply, so they're always working angles to flirt, 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 look for a new supply, and then they'll discard when it's time, so they devalue and discard when they've got a new supply. Injury, they, they're they looking, they're injured, and so they're looking to injure you so that you'll have the trauma bond with them. They can't forgive, they're just, that's not part of them. They have rage, narcissistic rage is horrible, and, you know, they can't look inside themselves. They have no internal compass. They'll do the smear campaign, campaign, and they'll bring in their flying monkeys. They'll they'll take your own kids and turn them against you. Okay, um, they're passive aggressive. Oh boy, are they passive aggressive? Ah, they use triangulation. They're very deceptive and very good at tri triangulating, making you look crazy. They enable you enable them. <laughs> uh, they they want you to be a codependent. They want to ghost you. 
and they use silent treatment to ghost you. They use trauma bonding, as I mentioned before. They inflict pain. They love that. They're very insecure. They're paranoid. Uh, they have paranoia. They're uh, they're Nixon, okay, and they they are pan they have panic problems, okay. So when you see people with panic issues, keep in mind they may be codependent with a narcissist. You never know. Um, they mirror you incredibly well. They bait. They wrestle in the mud. They love to drag you down to their level. Uh, they breadcrumb you along so that you'll just go for one more breadcrumb and they starve you. They scapegoat you. Uh, they faked your future. Oh, we're going to do great. Don't worry. Don't worry. Everything's going to be incredible. Um, they love bomb you. They hoover you. They suck you back in. They gaslight. They project. They're toxic. They mask their shame. We talked about the masks. And the Antichrist will mask the shame and mask many things. They gossip. They lie. Uh, and the masks, as I mentioned one more time, the shame. They, they cover their shame with the masks. I want to compare it to Pan, the Azazel story. So this is the Leviticus 16 story where we have Yom Kippur and Pan is part of this thing. And I'm going to compare it also to Esau. And we're going to go through this real quick. Amalek spirit, Azazel spirit. There is that weird creature that people have in Oklahoma now and other places that is the goat boy. OK, so Esau was the brother of Jacob. And think about it. OK, so. Jacob has to put goat skin on his body to make his dad think that it's him. Uh, have you needed to do that with your kids to make them look like their siblings? <laughs> I mean, think about how hairy and goat-like and what he smelled like this Esau kid was, okay? Just keep that in mind, and that's that Azazel spirit. That's what's going to be inside the, the Antichrist. Okay, so they're professional actors. They pretend. They're charming. Um, all these things. Well, guess what? Here's Esau. So just keep in mind, he's he's a prototype of, and so is Nimrod for that matter too, but no, Nimrod was more of a covert, I mean an overt narcissist. Esau was a covert one. And many of us to this day think Jacob was the supplanter, the deceiver, the blah, blah, blah. No, it was Esau. Okay. Upward envy. That's Genesis 25, 23. He was a goat boy, no doubt about it. No job, really. You know, he was just a hunter. You know, sold his birthright. <laughs> you know, that's a covert narcissist. Married a terrorist against mom's wishes. Twisted the brother's name. So, you know, lied about the brother's name and kind of created a falsehood around it. Harbored envy, hatred. Uh, recruited flying monkeys to kill his brother, his, his 400 men with him. He married a Canaanite against his mother's wishes. And then he had that Jew, Judas kiss, that Schadenfreude, which is Genesis 33, 4. So he kissed his brother at the end. Of, and if you could read Hebrew, I wish you could, so you could see the markings. It's really weird in the Hebrew. Okay, in the Masoretic text. So the, the covert narcissist is sick and Normally, people can be healed, even from leprosy, as you see on the left-hand side, okay? Covert narcissists don't heal. You're the one with the problem, okay? So the Antichrist is not going to be healed. The false prophet is not going to be healed. And those that take the mark of the beast are not going to be healed, okay? So keep that in mind. Don't take the mark. So God prophesied pain during the end times. And the Antichrist will be a pain inflictor. And so he feels hurt, so he has to hurt you. Hurt people, hurt people. You know what I mean? So everything is going to seem like an illusion, and he's not going to grieve over it. Um, now, this is Les Carter. I, I love this. My healing will come as I remove myself from the one who's generating this pain, as I listen instead to my own yearning for peace, for my own shalom. Okay? If they leave you, you're the lucky one. Okay? So just keep in mind, normally people can be healed from all sorts of diseases. We have no evidence of covert narcissists ever being healed. Okay? And why? Because they would never admit that there's anything wrong with them. And I'm going to bring in a little bit of Heiserisms, just so you can see the demonic aspect, because he studies this stuff out. And I'm starting to like Heiser even more now. Um, so demons and narcissists fear the most. What do they fear? Diminishment. Defeat. Keep that in mind for demons and the Antichrist, the false prophet, too. Diminishment. Defeat. What do covert narcissists fear? Diminishment. Defeat. Shame. Okay. So as we've discussed before, it's shame, and we'll see that during the last half of the Great Tribulation, but we won't really see it as we move through the birth pangs, which are the seals, and as we move into the trumpets, we really won't know 
that he's the Antichrist because he's going to be a covert guy for a long period of time until he pops up and he kills the two witnesses. And you see it there just a, a, just a tiny bit before the seventh um, trumpet, and that opens the seven bowls. That's when you're going to know who the Antichrist is, and he will stop being the covert narcissist and become the overt narcissist. And so he'll operate in a different way. So just keep that in mind. That's how it's going to work through, um, according to my scheme, and it seems to be working so far. Um, so that's the end of the video. Thank you very much for your time. 